sponsors. Uh, next, we have Stefan Benel and uh, David Woods, who are going to talk about fast native data structures C, C++ from Python. Hi, Stefan. Hello. Hi, David. How are hey, you? Everyone. <laughs> nice to have you at the conference. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Even virtually. I mean, this is, uh, I think it's a, it's a good, good occasion. So uh, this seems to be a very technical talk, basically like the one that we had before. Uh, I won't take away uh, more of your time, so I'm just going to head on straight into the, into the presentation. So I'd like you to share your screen. Right? And then I'll hop off the stage. And uh, if there are questions, then I will uh, run a Q&A. Otherwise, uh, you can use the full 45 minutes. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Mark and Marie. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our talk. Um, so uh, this is a talk on, on using Siphon, um, specifically for using it uh, to assess native data structures and Python data structures uh, in, a, in a very fast way. So I get right into it. And um, I'll start with a little intro to Cython, just in case I haven't used it before. So um, in order to use it from a Jupyter Notebook, um, you would first say load X Cython to, uh, to enable Cython support. And then uh, you can use Cython from within the notebook in Cython cells. So in order to make use of Cython, you would use static type declarations. So that's what Cython gives you. It's basically Python, but um, it adds uh, a way to um, to statically type your code. You use static types, static C types, static uh, C++ data types in your code, and then compiles the whole thing um, into a Python extension that you can then load and use from your Python runtime. Okay, so how does this look? Um, you would basically just write Python code, and then by adding the percent percent Python uh, um, cell magic in the Jupyter Notebook, or by compiling your module with Python um, using this utils, using uh, setup tools, um, Python would then uh, translate it to C and uh, give you a, um, an extension that you can use to. Um, to import it into Python. Okay, so from the Jupyter Notebook, you would just say percent percent Python, and then um, you can write Python code in it and have Python compile it and run it for you. Okay, so here's a simple Python function. Um, you can use, as I said, uh, static type declarations in your Python code. So you would use that for arguments in this case. Um, you can have uh, an argument type declaration, as you know from Python. You can you declare global variables as C data types, so this is C integer in this case, and then you can use that in your code. So this is um, how you would add state type declarations into your Python code to make Cython aware of them and to make Cython um, generate better code for you, fast code. Okay, as you can see, you can now use your functions. You can just call them as you would uh, from any Python function. So a bit more about functions. Uh, Python, sorry, Cython can compile Python functions, but it can also uh, it also allows you to generate uh, direct C functions, and um, it has a way. Let me say C func. Use the C func decorator. Um, this function is turned into a plain C static function in your code, and that's also a way um, to get fast access to Python functions from other Cython code so that you get a straight C call into your code and otherwise expose it to Python as a normal Python function. So this is a kind of a, a mix between the two. So calling C um, You can use C code directly from your code. And so here's a way to uh, use code from the libc math. Um, math part, so I was, I'm using the C sign function, C pi constant, just do a little calculation here in my code. 
and then um, this is executed directly in C rather than going through a Python math module, for example. Okay, so let's go to the straight into the, the topic of the talk: fast access to Python data structures. So um, Python data structures. What I mean with that is basically the built-ins. Let's look at what uh, Python can do to make access to the Python list type faster. Okay, Python list. Here's a very tiny toy example. You calculate the sum of squares for a list of integers. So I have 80,000 integers. Um, just randomize them for the, the sake of an, of an example here. And then I can use the sum function in Python uh, and a generator expression to calculate the list of squares. When I run this, what I get is that for 80,000 integers, apparently this is pretty quick. It runs in 11.8 milliseconds. And now we can do the same in plain Python. We can run a loop over the list of integers and calculate the square that way, the sum of squares that way. Um, and uh, so um, when I run this, obviously it's a bit slower because the sum built in is highly optimized and very fast. And so uh, it takes a bit longer um, effectively what did we have before. Before we had, uh, it actually runs a bit faster for whatever reason. Well, that's probably just because it's you know it's, uh, it's so fast that you get variances in the, the execution time. It's 20% faster for whatever reason. Maybe it's just not enough data, or I don't know. Okay. Um. Anyway, so we have two versions to do this in Python, uh, and, and now what happens when we do uh, the same calculation in Python? Uh, again, we use load x Cython in order to make Cython available for a notebook, and now we uh, put this function into a Cython cell, Cython compiled cell, and let Cython compile it for us. And uh, so that's a little bit faster already. So we gain a bit of speed here um, compared to the sum version. Um, uh, it's a bit faster just by uh, basically adding these seven uh, seven characters, right? Percent percent Cython, and it's faster. Why is that? Well, we can ask Cython what it made of our code, and uh, we do that by adding dash a here, right? So show me the annotated version of my code, and gives you an HTML version that uh, shows what. Python uh, understood of your code and how it interprets it. And I'll make you click on the line here. You can see um, it's, it's apparently doing some uh, some Python operation on it. So there's a, uh, a Python C API function being called. And the loop here is uh, very involved with lots of code. And uh, that's also why it's a dark yellow. Um, the, the darker the, the code line, the more Python interaction there's involved in it. Well, it can run much faster if we push the actual calculation into native C integers. Um, so what I what I do now is I add static types, and um, uh, that allows me to uh, tell Cython that I want the everything but the iteration. So iterating over the, the list uh, is still a Python operation, but afterwards then. Um, uh, everything that I do with the values in the list is now using C long integers and runs in plain C. And you can see that from uh, the annotated version that now the S plus equals line um, is, is really a straight, um, a straight C operation. Okay, so when you time this, um, it's visibly faster. Right, and we are at a speed up uh, factor of uh, point 13, so that's a lot faster. Okay, we can go even faster because Python lists are not a very efficient way to store integers, to store basic data types or native data types, right? And commonly, when people do this, um, there there are two uh, data types that people use and can, can use in. Uh, in, in Python, that is the Python array type, and obviously NumPy arrays. We'll see about that later. Um, 
now there's this, this nice array type in Python, which allows you to efficiently store uh, plain and or native C data types like car uh, character uh, in uh, double all these these native data types that you see CPU can nicely work on. You can look that up in, in the library documentation. Um, and another way we use this is we create a new array, tell it what data type we have. So the, the uh, little l uh, says we want to see long integers as native data type. And then we just put our list of values in there and get copied into a, a straight memory array uh, with c long integers. And now we can run the whole thing on this array type. Okay. And we can see uh, it's about the same speed, a tiny bit faster in this case. Okay. Um, so compared to the um, to unpacking the integers directly from the list, uh, it's like what 20% faster, right? And so we get a speed up of 0.10. This is currently already a bit more efficient than the list. But we can do this even faster by using the buffer protocol. So the buffer protocol is a feature that Python has built in that allows native assess to, uh, well, it basically allows um, native code to uh, efficiently assess data buffers. Right? And that is a, uh, like a, um, a protocol in the, the runtime, and that allows different, um, different extensions, different uh, Python modules to, uh, to assess the same data efficiently. So what we do, instead of just saying, well, there's an argument int, we say this argument int actually has a type, and that's uh, a C-long array, right? One-dimensional, so there's only one colon in here, one-dimensional C array of longs. And um, what this gives you is a view on that data buffer. So we call this a memory view. Okay. Um, now, uh, um, so when we do the calculation now with uh, this typed input argument, typed as a memory view, we can see that it gets way faster. Um, we're still passing in the Python array here. And now what Python can do here is it can unpack the data buffer directly uh, and assess the C memory from it. So it doesn't need to go uh, through, um, through the, the Python interface of the array anymore. It doesn't need to read Python integers. It can now directly assess the internal memory buffer of the array, and that gives you C speed in the end. So the factor is really uh, huge in comparison. Okay, and now you can see that the same actually works with NumPy arrays because NumPy arrays also support this buffer interface. Now when I create a NumPy array from my list, a one-dimensional one NumPy array, um, and pass this into the uh, calculation function that uses memory views, you can see that it's, it's about the same speed in the end. Okay, but I can decide which data type I want to use. So maybe a little small. I um, hope you can read it. Uh, so here's a little comparison um, that compares uh, the capabilities of different data types and the you know the, the kind of the performance implication that that gives you. And now I'll pass over to David um, to present some more lower low level data structures. Hi. Yes. So I'm. Um, mainly talking about C++ but and and how to use the sort of built-in containers from C++ um, in Cython. But just to, to just to start off, I was going to start by showing you how to to allocate some sort of raw C raw C arrays. Um, so to do this, I guess if we can move on to the next slide, um, we're using. We're using malloc and tree, which for those that are familiar with C, those come from the, um, the C standard library and they, they allocate a bunch of memory 
um, well, malloc allocates a bunch of memory free, we then get rid of it. Um, and I guess the important thing to, to emphasize here is that it's entirely your own fault if you forget to free it. So while um, Python objects will free themselves when you, you run out, you know, for malloc and free, you're, you're getting a sort of raw, raw block of memory directly from C and you're responsible for allocating it and, and freeing it. Um, so just to show it how you would use it in a in our sort of C example, what we're what we're doing here is we're sorry, um, um, what we what we're doing here is we're aiming to allocate the memory, copy over our list into it, um, and then we're going to iterate through the list as before. So obviously this is slightly artificial. Um, there's, you know, we have to iterate through the list to copy into it. So the, the first thing we do is we do this Cython declare as a sort of, as a, a, a long pointer, then we, then we call pymem malloc, which is a sort of Python implementation of malloc. Um, and then we have a sort of small loop that, that iterates over our list of integers and copies it into our memory. Um, and then, then we do our sum over squares and we can do that. It looks very much like a, like a normal Python loop. Um, and it, that loop is, is very fast and efficient because it's accessing directly into the C, into the C memory. Um, and then we then after the, with that done, then we can we can free our C memory. And to free our C memory, we use this try finally pattern, which is the the most realistic, oh, the most um, reliable way of ensuring that we actually manage to free our memory. So obviously, in this case, for a um, very simple example, it's a bit pointless to iterate over a Python array copying, and then to iterate over our C array doing the calculation. But um, you can imagine. This is a quick way to allocate memory um, and and for a more complicated thing, it might well be, be worth it if we want a sort of scratch buffer to work in or something like that. Um, so just in terms of the timing, what you find is it's it's pretty good, but you have had to you have had to copy a a whole block of memory, so you've got an extra, an extra iteration. Um, so yeah, if we can, I think move on to to vectors next. Um, so the the C plus plus vector is for those of you that know C plus plus, it's a sort of a typed container. So a C plus plus vector, in this case, we're using the square bracket syntax to say that we want to store. Um, we want to store a vector of, of longs. Um, and this creates, in C++, it's called a, a template type. And so what, what you find, that this type behaves a lot like a Python list, except it can only hold one type within it. So it can only hold longs. Um, and so what you find is you look at the code, and it looks a lot nicer than the C1, and the, the iteration um, the iteration looks very nice. You can see we get, can just do for, you know, for value in ints, and it it adds up, and and everything's nicely typed. Um, what you're sort of, and just just looking into that iteration, um, what you've for those that you know C plus plus, it it iterates using the sort of begin and end iterator protocol. So this is a generic way in C plus plus to define a container that can be iterated. And what you find is that Cython can cope with pretty much any container that's iterable. Um, but the, the timing ends up slightly slower. And this is because there's an invisible um, change of data type when you first run it. So it, it, needs, it needs to go over your entire Python list and copy it into the C++ container. Um, and, and that's automatic. And that's you know, really nice. And it's fairly quick. But you've got to be aware that it's happening. So anytime you're passing data to and from Python, you have these um, invisible conversions. So what you find is that the conversion costs you a little bit of time. 
um, about you know twenty percent. But the um, but um, but without the conversion, it runs pretty much at the same speed as your memory view examples or that kind of thing. Um, so if you can work directly with um, these C++ types and avoid the conversions, then it can be a, a really nice way to work, um, but be aware they're happening. Um, so yeah, beware the hidden auto conversion is, is my big message about these C++ types. So if we move on to the next slide, I think. Um, so one, one nice thing you can do with these containers is that you can expose them to Python um, or back to Python. So here, what I do is I cast them to a memory view. So I've got a container, I fill it with values. In this case, it's the equivalent of a range. And then I expose it to a memory view just by just by using the, the length and getting the pointer out of the container. So the memory view knows how long it is. The memory view is understood by Python. Um, and so what I can do is I can call the um, the NumPy function, the NumPy sign function on our exposed container. Um, so if I've decided to write something in C++ because it, it works faster for my particular case, but suddenly find myself needing a NumPy function, these options are available to kind of mix and match and go between them. And the I guess the important thing to emphasize is there's no copying here. It's it's a memory view of the C++ container rather than a, rather than a copy. Um, but you do have to be careful that the C++ container outlives the memory view, otherwise you're in all kinds of exciting trouble. Um, so uh, the final thing to mention is, is C arrays. So um, in contrast to malloc, you don't have any choice of how long they are at runtime. So this really just doesn't work for, for our, um, our iterating over sum of squares thing. But you can allocate a sort of small st statically with a, a static length. You can allocate that on the stack. And Scython provides sort of nice tools to be able to slice them, to be able to copy between them, um, and that kind of thing, to be able to assign from lists. And these are, these are things that's actually surprisingly painful to do from C, but Scython goes a long way to making them look like Python types so you can iterate over them without um, Without upsetting yourself too much, um, but you ha just have to be aware that the length is the length is fixed, and so that really doesn't suit all problems. So I think just going back to our our table, what you find certainly the the advantage of the vector is it can hold it can't hold Python objects, but it can hold pretty much everything else you can think of. So it can hold structs and more complicated data types. Um, and it is easily resizable. Um, and it's resizable quicker than something like array array. Um, so it's it's not that it can do anything absolutely unique, but sometimes the combination of things it can do makes it a convenient tool for the job. Um, and I think that's the the end of um, and I'll hand it back to, to Stefan for the moment. Wonderful, thanks. So um We've heard about uh, Python sequences and native data type sequences um, and how we can use those from Python. So how about Python dicts, like the, the second important uh, data type that we have in Python? Let's uh, imagine that we have a repetitive list of four-digit integers, and we want to convert those into strings. OK, so in Python, we would just say, um, use a list comprehension. Uh, across string, so the, the string function, stir function, on each number, and then we get a list of strings, right? Um, that's fairly fast. We can do the same with map. So list, uh, create a list of uh, mapping the stir function to the list of numbers, also fairly fast. Um, and now the thing is, since this is a very repetitive list, uh, we got lots of ident identical strings in the end, and that uses, well, let's say it uses more memory than we want to invest for this. So we use a cache, right? We use dict as a cache um, to uh, only create uh, strings that we haven't seen before. So we just run over the integers, 
uh, look up the integers in a number cache. If it's in there, we take it, we take the string from it, and uh, if it's not in there, we insert a new string for it. Okay, and then we build a, a list of basically unique strings um, in the end, which are, you know, we have duplicate references to the uh, identical string objects, right? So that uses less memory in the end. Um, so when we do this uh, in Python, it's clearly uh, a lot slower than uh, the very simple list comprehension or map version uh, 0.7. Um, so like it's almost twice as slow, right? Um, but what happens when we do this in Python? So let's comp just compile this, what we have, um, take the, the function as it is, push it into a Python cell, compile it, and then um, what we can see is actually faster than the map version now, right? Why is that? Well, Python understands what a dict is. Uh, it understands the Python operations that we do in our code, and um, it can speed up the iteration, it can speed up the dict assess, and all that, uh, and that already gives us 10% speed advantage over the fastest Python uh, implementation that we've seen. And it's about twice as fast as the uh, Python interpreted version of the loop. Cool. So let's see what else we can improve. Our F strings fast. Everyone likes F strings? Let's be using F string here instead of calling the stir function. Right. Um, and we can see that that makes it another bit faster. So we are down to 0.8, pretty much, 20% uh, gain um, compared to the map version. And um, so that shows you that uh, f-strings are also very fast in, in Python. Um, and what we've seen before is, you know, Python supports static typing, so let's use static typing. Um, we can type our integers as soon as they come into the system. Um, so we just say the loop variable that we have here, which you know takes the integers one after the other, looks it up in the cache and all that. Let's type that as a C long. Okay. And what happens? It actually makes it slower. So why did it become slower? Um, well, the the reason for that is that um, a lot of these operations here, all the big lookups and all that, actually use objects. Right. So now that we've uh, unboxed, I would say so. Um, I've unpacked our uh, Python integer object into a C long. Um, in order to look it up in dict, we need to box it again into a Python object, integer object, um, to ask the dict if it's contained in there. So we've actually now introduced a lot of back and forth operations between C data types and object data types, and that's costly. So um, let's use C integers only where they help. We keep our, we keep our algorithm as it was before. We use Python objects uh, from the list. We take one by one, look it up in the dict, and then only when we do the integer to a string conversion in the end, then we tell Cyton, please unpack that, this into an integer, and then pass the C integer into an F string, and that is actually faster. Right? So that gives us another, another speed up, because now Cyton can do uh, C integer conversion to strings, which is faster than Python, the generic Python object conversion into, uh, um, well, that, that uses formatting. Okay, and then we're back to an example that David put. Right, so I, I just wanted to, I guess, show some of the more obscure C++ data types, just um, an example that it sounds slightly artificial, but I, I have used this myself. Um, so calculating the rolling median is a kind of common operation for smoothing images and time series. And we use the median because it's, it's quite good for ignoring sort of big outliers. Um, so I, I've got a picture from the next slide which shows how we might implement a naive implementation of this. So we, we're doing a median over five, we take a chunk, and then we do a partial sort um, to find the, the sort of middle number. Um, and we have to do a copy each time. So if we go on to the, the next slide, the actual code, um, here what I've done is I've, I've written it just in NumPy. So we, we use a memory view. Um, there's a bit of thought about picking out the start and end index. And then we just call NumPy median on this chunk we've selected. 
Um, and that's basically it. It's, it's a fairly simple implementation. Um, but, uh, and it does work. But what you find is it isn't phenomenally fast. Um, so the next thing to do is, um, so we, yeah, this is just creating some arbitrary data just to just to test it, and we we find it takes about sort of 360 milliseconds. So so it's not phenomenally fast. The next thing to do is to avoid the Python call to NumPy median and use C plus plus instead. So this looks a fairly horrendous block of code, but actually there's there's a lot of declarations in there, so it's not quite as bad as it looks. Um, and the the main thing I'm doing is I'm using nth element, which comes from the C++ standard library and does exactly what we want to do. It, it sort of does a partial sort of the array. So everything below the nth element is less than it. Everything above the nth element is more than it. Um, and that's almost it. There's, there's then a tiny bit of thought about what happens if you've got order median even length. So moving on, um, to call that, we've, we've got a, a sort of further function um, that that makes one significant sort of saving on the um, on the Python version, and that's that it it allocates this working array once because it, it's a known length. So we we only need to do one allocation, and that's a fairly significant saving. And then it calls this calculate median function that I've written. And the I guess the final thing I want to note on this is I I quite like this pattern for for that allocating values that we return to Python. So we've got a Python object, which is just the NumPy out, and then we've got a view on it that lets it lets it run fast in Python. But when we get to the return statement, we just write return out. Um, that's just a, a pattern I like a lot. And this this slide is just, just noting that I've avoided the per iteration allocation. And so what we find is that this is, this is actually, you know, fairly significantly faster. Um, it's it's uh, 4% of the of the total the total time that the, the numpy version look so it's a worthwhile optimization but there's there's a sort of better way of doing it um the, the the better way of doing it is to take two sorted containers of the values above and below the median i think if we go on to the next slide that has a, a little diagram and essentially as we go we can we can quickly add and remove elements from them so we can we the first step we remove five because that's the that's the sort of element we're no longer looking at and we add eight that's the element that we're sort of adding to the rolling median so we can add these very quickly to the containers because they're sorted and because they're sorted we we can then look at the uh look at the two end points and the median um the median is just the five it's already there because it's sorted um and all we need to do is sort of swap rebalance the ends so this this unfortunately then involved becomes quite a, a long example, um, which I won't go in immense detail over, but um, but it's just this: we're removing these two elements, for, so we're putting one element in, taking one out, and then rebalancing it. And the the upshot is that it ends up fairly significantly faster. So this ends up as about fifteen fifteen percent of the time taken to to run the other C++ examples. So it's a it's a really quite big saving um, just because we've used the right algorithm. And I guess the point I wanted to make here was that the C++ containers aren't just that they're like Python containers, but faster. So vector is kind of a faster list. But here I've managed to get access to a container that just doesn't exist in, in Python. And so I've managed to use the right algorithm without having to re-implement this huge container type myself. So the, the message is be aware that by using sort of C++ containers, you can get you can get access to, to nice stuff that doesn't really have an equivalent in Python. Um, and yeah, so that's all I wanted to say on this particular subject. Um, so I'll hand back over. Cool. So um, just a quick uh, view on some advanced Python language features that help you, um, you know, dealing with data uh, that are not so immediately, well, that are efficient, but not so directly uh, available in Python. On a C tuples, uh, so if you need to um, deal with more than one, one value, like a tuple of two, for example, um, you can declare this in Python as just a tuple of types. 
and then internally this is implemented as a C struct. Um, so there's a very efficient way of uh, you know um, putting together a bunch of uh, of different uh, C data types that you would normally store in a Python tuple, right? But this is uh, the the most efficient way to do this in C. Okay, so Python has this as a data type and. Uh, one more thing, uh, you may know the uh, total ordering decorator from functools. We now have an implementation in Python that is very efficient. And you can use that on C implemented classes on extension types, right? And so if you add a total ordering decorator there, um, works, it's, it's, you just um, implement something like equals and lower than, or like a, like a few comparison functions and it explodes them into a, uh, supporting all comparison functions for your type. And then you can do various comparisons with it, uh, including those that you have not implemented. And uh, um, yeah, you can see they're all there. And now if you compare the, uh, the timings, um, this is a lot faster because it's, it's a type implemented in C. Right? So the comparisons benefit a lot from it. So if you have um, the need for, to implement some, some data type, uh, that suffers from comparison performance, consider turning it into an extension type, uh, compiling it in Cython, and then um, use the total ordering decorator to let Cython generate the, um, the comparison operations for you. Okay, a bit more NumPy arrays. We've seen memory views before, and we've used them uh, to assess, um, uh, well, to, to make uh, data from C++ vectors available to Python and to assess the data that we store in Python arrays, NumPy arrays, and now let's look into that a bit more. So here's a NumPy uh, expression that we calculate on a two-dimensional array. And if we do this in NumPy, um, well, let's see, it takes about 800 milliseconds to do this on a large array, somewhat large array. Um, and now let's see what Python can do for us. So first thing we can do is we can spell out this calculation into an actual uh, loop, so a two-dimensional loop running over the array and doing the calculation um, from two arrays into a, a third output array, but uh, doing it directly uh, item by item, okay, Run while we are running over the arrays. Okay, um, right. So um, we, when we do this, we get a, about a bit more than a two times speed up. Um, simply because we can now unpack the data and do the whole calculation directly in, uh, in C, in Cython. But let's see if we can speed it up further, okay? So the first thing we look at is um, the annotated version, and it tells us that there are actually Python operations going on in the last line. When we do look deeply into that, um, we can see that what Python does, uh, Cython does here is um, Cython calculations are safe here. So the access to the memory view takes into account uh, Python's ability to uh, use negative indexing uh, to do uh, out of bounds assess and raise an index error for that. Um, and here, uh, our algorithm is written in a way that makes sure that we're not getting out of the bounds of the arrays. And so we can disable these safety checks. We can do the, now take off our, our safety belt um, because we know that it's going to work. And then uh, when we disable those, it gets another bit faster, usually around 10% or so. Um, so this is something you can do in Cython. You can really you know, get into C and accept that C is unsafe and then can give you speed uh, uh, improvements. Um, Cython comes with another feature, and that is Python. Python is, a, is basically a, a NumPy expression compiler. It compiles it to C++, and you can use Python as a backend in Cython. And now um, you can use the, the uh, the plain NumPy expression that we had before with a couple of type uh, declarations in your code and use uh, enable Python and tell uh, Python to uh, compile this expression for you as part of the Cython compilation. And uh, it's also a, a, a nice speed up that you get in the end. It's about more or less uh, the same performance that you get with a loop. The loop tends to be a little faster um, overall, but you know, Depend, totally depends on your specific code. Um, there's one more thing that can, you can do 
in Siphon, and that is since we are doing all these calculations down in, in C space now, you can use uh, multi threading, you can disable uh, the gill, you can release the gill uh, while it's doing your calculation and run it in multiple threads. And so, OpenMP support is uh, so one way to get OpenMP support is in the P range function uh, instead of the range function for the iteration, so the parallel range function. And when you use this in Cython in your code, you just replace range by P range, tell it to free the gill while it's running over your loop. And that gives you another nice speed up. But the specific example is not huge, um, but uh, in, in many cases you get, um, well, if, it, if it's really independent data and large arrays, uh, you typically get something close to uh, the, the uh, number of, of, of threads as an improvement. So um, one thing to keep in mind, as uh, David already mentioned before, um, it's, it's a good idea to take the, um, the creation of the output array out of your, your benchmarks, basically out of your, your running code, because often you already know where to put your data in the end, or you can even do the calculations in place on one array. And then uh, if you take this out, then um, and look at the, the bare calculation without the uh, additional um, allocation for the output array, then it's another very visible bit softer. Okay, so for the takeaways, what have we learned today? Direct memory, it says, is great. Um, it's wonderful to be able to unpack data structures in Cython. Um, even high-level data structures, they're wonderful as long as you can unbox them. And uh, so Cython really puts an extra toolbox here in your hands. You get unboxed assess to built-ins. You get uh, a direct native assess to NumPy arrays, to C, C data structures. You can use them directly in your code. And um, as a new feature in Cython 3, you can now do all this in Python syntax as well. OK, cool. Thank you for listening. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. So let's play the applause. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, so we have a couple of questions. We have more questions than we can uh, you know, run through in, in this uh, talk, but uh, we, you can go to the breakout room afterwards and then answer the other questions. So the first question, uh, is is the note, Jupyter notebook or the slide deck available somewhere? Because it has sure. so many nice hints and you know tips and features, and it's really interesting. Sure, we can make it available. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the URL um, in the chat somewhere in the in the uh, rooms chat. And related to this, I have a question as well. Is is there something like a Cython cookbook, which you know kind of collects all these tips and and uh, you know, features that people might not directly find in the documentation? I think one well, was published I mean, a few years ago. Yeah, there, there's a book on, on Cython available. Um, it's already a couple of years old uh, by now. Um, so it doesn't have all these you know, nice Python syntax features in there, which is still really pretty recent. Um, but the documentation has it all. I mean, we are, we're keeping the documentation updated, definitely. Um, okay. Great, so next question. When will Cython 3 be released? Yeah, last year. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're still working on that. So there's still uh, rough edges um, that uh, we want to finish before releasing it, but it's, it's really uh, getting there now and we're adding uh, the features that we want in it and fixing the stuff that we want to fix for the next major version. So, um, but you can already use it. That's the cool thing. So just um, uh, get the, the latest alpha. Uh, it's called alpha because it's not feature complete yet. Um, it's not called alpha because it's, it's going to break your code and, and um, do anything bad to you. It's, it's, it's working and you can use it right now even for your production code. I could recommend it. <laughs> okay, excellent. So let me see, we can, I think, do one more question. Um, so let's take a more technical one, this one. Is it possible to use Cython to write custom computations for data being held in Apache Arrow memory format? 
Yeah, so the um, Python wrapper for Apache Arrow is actually written in Python. So on the Py Arrow implementation um, uh, is is written by the, the Pandas people, uh, um, Wes McKinney amongst others, uh, and uh, they are big fans of Python. They are using it for a lot of things. Uh, I mean, Pandas itself has a, has a huge bunch of Python code, and it's mostly written in Python. Um, and so is Pi Error. Yes, we can definitely use this um, from site in. Okay, excellent. So thank you very much for answering the questions. I will post the other questions to the breakout room, so perhaps you can go there and then maybe join the Jitsi there to answer the other questions. So thanks again for the talk. Very nice, very interesting. Lots of you know detail, lots of uh, hints that you, it's probably hard to find otherwise. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.